Hey everybody, welcome back. And now we're gonna bring in our matte painted elements. Uh, these elements were created in Photoshop. Uh, I can show you those. Um, I didn't uh, I didn't go out of my way to use an open source uh, 2D uh, program for this one, but this could have very easily been accomplished in uh, Krita or GIMP or whatever other, uh, there's a million programs out there nowadays. There's browser programs that'll let you do this. So, um, so yeah, I created this bridge and this, uh, this hut. I had to give this hut a shadow that matched all the other shadows. And you can see it's not, it's a little brighter than these shadows, but we can dial that in in comp. And, uh, I also made, I threw this together. I'm not even sure if this is, uh, this is, this one's going to be usable, but, uh, I threw this background mountain or a uh, mountain, this background castle in maybe a little extra something back there. So, uh, those are the elements we have. And what I did was I, I would, uh, to get them out of here, I would select them. So say like that, and I would just hit copy control copy and then control N to create a new image. And the new image, when you've got something in the clipboard in Photoshop, it automatically makes it the size of that selection. So because I selected that uh, and I copied it, that's how big it makes the image that it's going to create next. So if I hit OK and I hit Control V, it pastes that image perfectly into the new, uh, the new image. So it's cropped perfectly. Uh, it's got this white background. You can just drag that down to trash to delete it. And now you've got an empty background. And if you just save that as a PNG file, it will save it with an alpha channel and uh, and that's exactly what I did uh, save none of that so I've got a bridge I've got a that background castle I've got the hut the shadow for the hut and a sky for the far background uh, because as we've seen in this image the if I go front to turn it up this sky is really quite boring uh, I mean, it's a beautiful sky. I mean, who doesn't? Uh, this is the the glory of Southern California. Is almost every day looks like this. Uh, but as far as visual interest, there's not much there. So, um, so yeah, I'm just I'm gonna. Well, I guess I'll leave it down here a little bit. So anyway, yeah, let's start bringing in that geo, right? Uh, first, let's do a little cleanup in here on this far, this far, uh, in these other layers over here. Uh, that's our original uh you know our our mesh export from tracking we can leave that there we don't have to worry about that but on this layer i'm going to select both of these uh all this other geometry that we're not it's helper geometry but we're not going to actually be rendering any of this stuff and i'm going to move it to one of these lower scenes uh one of these lower layers down here so uh, my main scene will still be on these upper layers uh, this is just how I think of this stuff in my brain, how I organize things and then uh, helper things down here. So for now, I'll turn them both on and select nothing. Cursor's at the center. If not, control S as always. And uh, the only other thing you need to have turned on, which I always have on by default, is the uh, import images as planes add-on which will let you uh, it'll bring in images and create a plane uh, by default that is the size of that image and uh, amazingly it also gives you the option to set up a whole bunch of easy shaders as well which is perfect for what we're doing I'm using cycles as well um, it's probably my default I mean it is my default render engine so I'll always be using cycles on this site uh, unless I specifically specify otherwise so let's go ahead and bring in our first piece of geometry. Let's go uh, file. Oh, I'm sorry. Shift A, right? Mesh, import, images as planes. And we're going to go uh, right here. I've got a little elements folder, and you can see them there. We do not want these Photoshop layers. Uh, I, I believe that Blender can read a Photoshop file, but you can't break out the layers, or at least I don't know how. Uh, so for now, we're just going to bring in the hut first because we kind of know where that's going. Uh, we, it's it's kind of like the basis of the whole scene. So select that, but don't don't bring it in yet. Let's take a look over here what we got. Uh, extensions, align planes, that's fine. Uh, reload relative, match movie length, that's fine. It's not a movie. Uh, we do have an alpha channel, right? So we're going to say use alpha, 
and we're going to go pre-multiplied. Uh, so that's going to actually, uh, that's, I mean, of course we can change this all later. This is just going to set up some nodes for us. Uh, but because these images do have alpha channels already baked in, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and turn those on. And fields we don't have to worry about. Um, auto refresh is fine. Material settings, diffuse and emission. We want emission. And overwrite materials, fine. Plain dimensions, fine. So the rest is fine. Most important things are this alpha channel and to make it an emission because we are not going to... Uh, uh, we're going to render it through 3D, but we're going to render it as a 2D element. Uh, we're basically just putting the camera move on the 2D element. We don't want anything else to change with the color or uh, anything. We're going to handle all that in compositing, and emission will work great for that. So hit uh, import, click, and you should have your image right down there. I'm going to, right off the bat, uh, I want it 90 degrees to the camera. I'm going to hit RX90, rotate along X. 90 degrees and kind of move it up into the space. Uh, I'm going to switch this to material, maybe? No, texture. Texture works, uh, rendered works better. Uh, I guess we can leave it on texture for now. It'll be a little faster. Uh, you know what? Let's just turn it on rendered. Rendered is great. Um, yeah, that'll work fine. So now the thing is, is we have it here in our scene. Normally we'd be like, oh, where do we put it? But we know exactly where we're putting it because we have the mountain right here. So we're going to go kind of towards the back of the mountain, <clears throat> right where we know where we wanted it. Uh, it's a little small there. We're going to move it over till it's kind of intersecting. And then I'm going to scale it up. Just hit S. Scale it up till it looks like a good realistic size. Kind of move it up here. You can zoom in up here and kind of get an idea of where you want to put it this kind of thing looks pretty good right it's right there and I may even move it back further a bit so it's a little uh, further back on that mountain uh, that's probably pretty good right that looks pretty good yeah I think that'll work we can leave it like that and I'm gonna make sure that one is on that first layer which it is which is fine so when we only look at that layer there we have it. So you can turn off that geo and kind of place this uh, a bit more precisely uh, if you'd like. Which I'm actually going to do. Oh, what did I just do? Undo that. Uh, there we go. Something like this. And do I want to scale it down any? No, I think that's probably fine. And if you're wondering, like, it, it looks so much brighter, it's just I've got this opacity turned down. You can crank that up and you can see it fits in there really nicely. Uh, and you can see there's also a little bit of a white line right there, but you'll see in compositing that we're not going to have to worry about that. Um, I'm actually going to move it back a tiny bit more so we can see a little bit of this edge here. And there we go. That's our first placement. So the next one, if we go ahead and I'm actually going to put, we're going to put the shadow in next. And we know the shadow is going to be right next to this thing, right? So let's go ahead and put the cursor there cursor to selected and now when we shift a and import images as planes grab our shadow throw it in it will put it right where it's supposed to be right off the bat uh, rotate x 90 and scale it up a bit and you can see that right now that they're kind of uh, overlapping I'm going to bring this one forward in x just a tiny bit move it down and again you don't have to worry too too much about it just yet. Uh, I'm going to actually rotate it in Y a tiny bit. So it's kind of more with the slope of the hill. And let's get an idea of where that is. That looks great right there. Uh, don't worry about it overlapping the hut uh, because we are going to actually handle all that in compositing, the layering of it actually. And next let's bring in the bridge. So I'm going to go ahead and shift A and images is playing this again grab the bridge import and all our the uh after we did that first one we don't have to mess with these settings anymore they should just remain at what we set them unless of course you close blender and reopen it later then you'll have to double check these uh, so now we've got our bridge in here again i'm going to hit rx 90 
uh, and bring it in. And this bridge, I would like to think in this 3D world, is a little bit closer. So we're just going to move it a little bit closer, like that. And we're going to scale it up a bit and move it down and kind of start getting it right in place where we want it. Scale it up again and move it forward a bit more. Uh, that's probably pretty good. Let's move it down a bit. And the whole idea is that we put it in a place where we won't see these actual connection points, right? Where the, the pillars are kind of hitting the ground or where this side is hitting this side. Uh, we're only going to see where it connects with the ground over here uh, because we're going to actually have to put this bush and this ground back over top of it at some point. So you can kind of scroll through the shot, make sure it's not... Uh, you can see here at the beginning everything looks great, but if we go to the end, you can see those kind of show up. So we're going to actually switch that up. We're going to actually scale it a bit bigger and move it a little bit in X and in Z it down a tiny bit and there we go Ooh, what did I just do undo that just back down in Z sorry and that looks pretty good and if we scroll through that now that looks pretty good yeah I think that'll work uh, we're kind of trimming off a lot of the uh, the bridge here in the beginning part but uh, by the end we kind of need that because of where it is uh, revealing by the end and with any luck, these things are all remaining aligned just right as they should be. So, all right, we've got our bridge. Next, we're going to bring in the sky. Uh, if you hit Shift A and bring in a images plane, and we're going to grab the sky. Uh, I'm still not 100% sure yet that that background castle is going to work. Uh, I'm going to hit RX90 again, enter, bring it out here, and scale it way, way up. Scale it up. And this one, we're going to move, uh, I'm going to turn that geometry back on, because what I want to do is put it beyond the farthest hill. Uh, so we kind of know this is where our geometry kind of ended. And I'd like it back there, and I'm going to obviously scale it way up. And what we can do here is put this in front and kind of turn it down. And now you can kind of see exactly what your sky is doing. So there we go. Move it over a little bit and scale it up quite a bit more. And move it up a bit more. Let's see. That looks nice. So get that nice misty stuff there. And move it over in X a little bit. And let's uh, go back to this one. And let's just scroll through and see how that holds up. And it's looking pretty good. It goes all the way to the end. We're getting a little bit of clipping here, so all we have to do is kind of move that over in X, and it'll be great. There we go. If we go back to the end, everything looks good. And there we are. Sky is in, in place. And the only other thing left to bring in, if you want, is the uh, that castle far in the background. I'm going to go ahead and grab it. Uh, I'm not like I said. I'm not 100% convinced this is going to work. I did my uh, RX90 thing, uh, and I'm actually going to turn back on that other layer to uh, kind of make sure I get this back there where it's supposed to be. Uh, oh, there it is. It's real small. Scale it way up. Scale it up. Scale it up. And let's zoom in here and take a look. Turn this uh, back. And. Uh, now I can turn the other bottom layer back off and you know what the sky is kind of getting in the way right so let's move that sky to its own layer hit M and I'm gonna we've got five things in here so I'm gonna go ahead and put it on that last layer now we can get a real good look at the castle and where it's gonna be kind of move it here and we can turn that opacity back up see if it's gonna look good in there and that doesn't look too bad actually so let's leave it in and then oh, undo that and uh, we can decide later on in compositing if we're going to leave that in there and let's see how does it move um, it looks pretty good looks like it stays in there nicely so um, there we go so a little bit of cleanup as we put that um, we put the sky on that last layer let's move things around a little bit right so let's put the hut because that's our main area of interest that's on the first layer 
Second layer, we're going to put the shadow. So select that, hit M, move to the second layer. Uh, third layer will be the bridge. And the fourth layer will be that castle. Uh, M and fourth layer. So now if we turn on all of these layers, uh, you can see we have everything on its own layer. Everything is in place and ready to go. So let's save here and go on to the next tutorial where we will... Uh, start working in the compositor with these things. See you there.